Hi, I'm Ash from Being Swanglish, and this is going to be quite an interesting video for the ladies watching this channel because it's all about equality. Now, Sweden globally is prided as a country where men and women are equal. There are equal rights, equal support for working families, promoting parental leave, legal, political, cultural support. There is no reason why men and women in Sweden can't flourish in exactly the same way, in ways certainly more so than they can or are limited to in other countries which are less equal. It's prided as an example of male and female equality. Now let's just give some examples around this and some statistics. Many of the leaders of the top tech firms are female in Sweden. That certainly is my experience as well. I work in the tech and IT industry and many of the leaders, the very senior exec level people that I speak with in my regular job are indeed female in Scandinavia compared to when I worked in the UK where the majority are absolutely without question male. That's a big, big thing over here. 46% of the Swedish members of parliament are women, while the proportion in other Nordic countries is around 40%. I don't have any statistics for the non-Nordic or Scandinavian countries, but I'm sure it's a lot lower than that. The private sector is, however, lacking in terms of male-female equality in leadership. 28% of managers in Denmark are female, rising to 32 in Finland and Norway, and 36% in Sweden. That's quite interesting in the private sector. According to a report by independent think tank, the Cato Institute in 2018, Iceland is the highest scoring Nordic country with 40%. That's very, very interesting. Now, despite all of this, experts are suggesting that this equality is starting to stall. Scandinavia, the Nordic countries have come so far in terms of balancing the genders and ensuring that men and women have equal opportunities over here. But they are saying that apparently the reality is far from the media and the image stereotypes that there is complete equality here. Some experts are even saying that it's going to take another 50 years for Scandinavia and the Nordic countries to actually evolve to true 50-50 equality. And I found a very shocking example of this recently. Now, you might be aware, I did a video some time ago on sites such as Ratsit and Hita.se, whereby anybody in Sweden can look up anybody in Sweden and find out everything, almost, about those people. Now, for a country that also prides itself on privacy, it's quite shocking that you can tap somebody's name into this and it will tell you the house that they own, their full address, part of their person number, how many cars they own, what cars they are. You can even pay a little bit more to see their car registration number. And there's backwards lookup as well. So you can take somebody's car registration number and look up the person and all of their details for a tiny, tiny fee. You can even see their salary, what they earn per month, what their household earns, how many kids live in the house, whether they even own a dog. But also on Ratsit or Ratsit.se, when you look up somebody in a commune, scroll right down to the bottom of that page and it shows you the top 25 earners in that commune. Now, I find this rather shocking. I think it's quite disgusting, actually, that this kind of information is out there in public. Now, I'm going to show you some screenshots. I'm not going to hide the identities of the names here because it's public. It's on the internet for everybody to see via one click. So I'm not going to go to the effort of doing that. It is sad, however, that this kind of information is public. For example, I looked up in Malmö. It shows the top 25 earners in that commune. They even gamify it, which is quite disgusting. You see the little arrows uh, up and down and red and grey. They show whether that person has moved up in the list from year to year or down or stayed in the same position. I just think it's quite horrible that this sort of information is published and that it's legally allowed to be published. These people haven't opted into this. They haven't opted into their details being on any, any of these sites. And although you can request to remove yourself from some of them, quite often you'll find yourself back on them within a month because they just pull the information. I can't believe that this is legal. I certainly don't like this. And I've hidden my details from as many of these horrible sites as possible. And I suggest you go and do the same by referring to the video that I've covered on this topic before. Now, one thing that you may not or may have noticed in that list of Malma is the amount of women listed there in the top 25 highest earners in a massive commune like the Malma area. 
I think there's only two women there, Kirsten and Karen. The only two women out of 25 people listed in the top 25 earners are female in a country of almost absolute equality between men and women. Now, I thought that maybe this is just Malmö. So next, I looked up the Stockholm Commune, and guess what? It's an almost identical story. I think there's actually only one woman listed there, Anne Owl. What a great name. Apparently, she's quite famous, actually, Sweden. But one woman listed in the capital of Sweden in the top 25 earners list. And that's in the capital city where you'd probably expect to see a bit more equality. But no, exactly the same story. I also checked another commune, which, is, which actually has one of the lowest rates of tax in Sweden, Staffanstorp. And guess what? Almost an identical story as, as well there with just a couple of women listed in the top 25 earners. I even checked other communes. It's exactly the same story. It's just men in the top 25 earners. And that really shocks me for a country which you would expect to see a lot of equality there, right? You'd expect to see a balance of women and men in the top 25 earners list. So I was really, really surprised at that. Now, Professor Gilbert Stolt says that since Nordic countries have a generally high standard of living and strong welfare states, young women are free to pick careers based on their own interests, which he says are more likely to include working in caregiving roles or with languages. That's his opinion, not mine. But what he's basically saying is that because this country, uh, Scandinavia, the continent, and Nordic countries give women such freedom, the same freedom that men have as well, it means that they choose to work in careers that they want to. And that doesn't necessarily involve money. This, um, he also comments that girls and boys are different and have different preferences on the whole. He believes that too much media focus is placed on the lack of women in CEO positions since these account for such a small proportion of jobs overall. He also suggests, and I agree with this, that men fill these roles because personality traits and ambition to be important and famous are higher in men than women. Now, this guy's a professor. This is not just an opinion. This is fact-based research. We are different. Men and women are different. Whatever people say, yes, there's a lot of crossover. You'll find men that like to do the things that stereotypically women are interested in and women that are interested in doing the things that stereotypically men are interested in. But there's a, a real fact that across the entire globe, from every single country, there are patterns, aren't there, between men and women and the things that we enjoy doing or don't enjoy doing. And as he argues, this professor... Men want to be important and famous and earn money, whereas I think perhaps, well, he's saying that women tend to be more humble and want to do a job that they enjoy doing. Good for them. And that's why you see men in the top earners. Now, it's no pattern, no, no inconsistency here. The facts for these communes speak for themselves. One woman in Stockholm, two in Malmö, and only a couple in Staffanstorp. Can't argue with the facts, the figures. Now, it really did surprise me seeing that, and I really hope that that changes. Although, why should it? If women are happy doing the job they're doing and they're not one of the 25 high earners, they probably don't care as long as they're happy. And that's the core thing in Scandinavia. I see a lot less competition here in the careers of people. It's more about job satisfaction, work-life balance, and just being happy in general. And I applaud that because that's what life should be all about. Comment below with your thoughts on this. If you do want to spy on the top 25 earners in your commune, then head over to ratsit.se and find somebody there and scroll right down to the bottom. It's horrible that this stuff is public, but it is what it is. There's nothing I can do to stop that. And yeah, comment below anyway with your thoughts on this. Give this video a thumbs up. Hopefully this has opened up quite an interesting discussion point. And if you are interested in this kind of top topical conversation, then hit that subscribe button below. Thanks very much for watching, guys.